Okay, listen, we're gearing up for the start of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit, and we want to go back to the early roots of Snowflake. We got some of the founding engineers here, Abdul Munir, Ashish Modivala, and Allison Lee. They're three individuals that were at Snowflake in the early years and participated in many of the technical decisions that led to the platform that is making Snowflake famous today. Folks, great to see you. Thanks so much for taking some time out of your busy schedules. Thank you for having Thank us. Much. Dave. Hey, it's got to be really gratifying to see this platform that you've built, you know, taking off and changing businesses. So I'm sure it was always smooth sailing, right? There were, there were no debates, were there ever? No, I've never seen an engineer get into a debate. Yeah. <laughs> All right, no, seriously. So take us back to the early days. You guys, you know, choose whoever wants to start. But what was it like uh, early on? We're talking 2013 here, right? That's right. When I think back to the uh, early days of Snowflake, uh, I, I just think of all of us uh, sitting in one room at the time, you know, we just had an office that was one room with, you know, 12 or 13 engineers uh, sitting there, um, clacking away at our keyboards, uh, working really hard, churning out code, uh, punctuated by, you know, somebody asking a question about, hey, what should we do about this or what should we do about that? And then everyone kind of looking up from their keyboards and getting into discussions and debates about uh, about the work that we were doing. So, so uh, Abdul, it was like just kind of heads down, headphones on, just coding or? No, the, the, I think there was a lot of talking and uh, followed by a lot of typing. Uh, and and I think there were periods of time where, where you know, anyone could just walk in into the office and probably out of the office and all they'd hear is probably people uh, typing away at their keyboards. And, and uh, one of my, Mem vivid, most vivid memories is is actually I used to sit right across from Allison, and there was these huge two two huge monitors monitors between us, and I would just hear her typing away at her keyboard, and and sometimes I was thinking, and 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 uh, and and all that typing got me nervous because it, it seemed like Allison knew exactly what what uh, what she needed to do, and I was just still thinking about it. So Ashish, was this like bliss for, for you as a developer or an engineer, or was it, was it a stressful yeah. time? What, what was the mood? You know, when you don't have a whole lot of customers, there's a lot of bliss, but at the same time, there was a lot of pressure on us to make sure that we build the product. There was a timeline ahead of us. We knew we had to build this in a certain time frame. Um, so one thing I'll add to what Alison and Abdul said is we did a lot of whiteboarding as well. There were a lot of discussions and those discussions were a lot of fun. They actually cemented what we wanted to build. They made sure everyone was in tune and, and there we have it. Yeah, so, I mean, it is a really exciting time when doing any startup. But when you, when you have to make decisions in development, invariably you come to a fork in the road. So I'm curious as to what some of those forks might have been, how you guys decided, you know, which fork to take. Was there a Yoda? in the room that served as the Jedi master? I mean, how were those decisions made? Maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, that, that's an interesting question. And uh, I think one of, as I think back, uh, one of the memories that, that sticks out in my mind is, is this uh, epic meeting in, in one of our conference rooms called North Star. And many of our conference rooms are named after ski resorts uh, because the founders are really, into skiing and, and that's why, uh, that's where the, the Snowflake name comes from. So there was this epic meeting and, and I'm not even sure exactly what topic we were discussing. I think it was, it was the, the, the sign up flow and, and there were a few different options on the table and, and, and one of the options uh, that, that people were gravitating to, uh, one of the founders didn't like it and, and, uh, and, and they said a few times that uh, there's uh, this makes no sense. There's no other system in the world that does it this way, and uh, and I think one of the other founders said uh, that's exactly why we should do it this way, and or at least seriously consider this option. So uh, I think there was always this um, this this uh, uh, this tendency and 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 the, this impulse that that we needed to think big and think differently. And, and not see the world the way it is, but the, the way we wanted it to be, and, and then work our way backwards and try to make it happen. Uh, Allison, any fork in the road moments that, that you remember? Well, I'm just thinking back to a really early meeting uh, with Ashish and, and a few of our founders where we're uh, debating 
something probably uh, not super exciting to a lot of people outside of hardcore database people, which was how to represent our, uh, our column metadata. Um, and I think it's funny that you, uh, that you mentioned Yoda because uh, we often make jokes about uh, one of our founders, Thierry, um, and refer to him as Yoda because he has this tendency to say um, very concise things that uh, kind of make you scratch your head and say, wow, why didn't I think of that? Or, you know, what exactly does that mean? I never thought about it that way. So, so I think uh, when I think of the Yoda in the room, it, it was definitely Thierry. Uh, Ashish, anything you can add to this, this conversation? I'll agree with Alison on the Yoda comment for sure. Yeah. Another big fork in the road I recall was when we changed what our meta store, where we store our own internal metadata. We used to use a tool called MySQL and we changed it to another database called FoundationDB. I think that was a big game changer for us. And you know, it was a tough decision. It took us a long time. For the longest time, we even had our own little branch. Uh, it was called FoundationDB and everybody was developing on that branch. It's a little embarrassing, but you know, those are the kind of decisions that have alter, altered the shape of Snowflake. Yeah, I mean, these are really, you know, down in the weeds, hardcore stuff that a lot of people not, might not be exposed to. W what would you say was the least obvious technical decision that you had to make at the time? And, and I want to ask you about the most obvious too, but what was the, what was the one that was so out of the box? I mean, you kind of maybe mentioned it a little bit before, but I wonder if we could double click on that. Well, I think one of the core decisions uh, in our architecture is the separation of, of compute and storage. Um, and you know th that is really core to our architecture and there's so many features that we have today. Um, for instance, uh, data sharing, uh, zero copy cloning that, that we couldn't have without that architecture. Um, and I think it was both not obvious and when we told people about it in the early days, there was definitely skepticism about being able to make that work. Uh, and being able to uh, have that architecture and still get great performance. A anything, yeah, exactly. Yeah, anything that was like clearly obvious that is, or maybe that maybe that was the least and the most that that separation from compute and storage because it allowed you to actually take advantage of cloud native. But but was there an obvious one that you know is it sort of dogma that you you know philosophically live by you know to this day? I think one really obvious thing um, is the sort of no tuning, no knobs, ease of use story behind Snowflake. Um, and, and I say it's really obvious because everybody wants their system to be easy to use. Um, but then I would say there were tons of decisions behind that, that it's not always obvious uh, the implications of, of such a choice, right? And really sticking to that. And I think that that's really like a core principle behind Snowflake um, that that led to a lot of uh, non-obvious decisions as a result of sticking to that principle. So, yeah, and I think I, I, to add to that, now now you've gotten us thinking. I think another really interesting one was was really um, should we start from scratch, or or should we use something that already exists and and build uh, on top of that? And I think that was one of these. Um, uh, almost philosophical kind of uh, stances that we took that that um, a lot of the systems uh, uh, that were out there were 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 the way they were because uh, because they weren't built for the for the platforms that they were running on and and the big thing that we were targeting was the cloud and so one of the big uh, uh, stances we took was that we were going to build it from scratch. And we weren't going to borrow a single line of code from many other database out there. And, and this was something that really shocked a lot of people. And, and many thought that this was pretty crazy, and it was. But, but th this is how you build great products. That's awesome. All right, Ashish, I'll give you the last word. We got like just like 30 seconds left. Take, bring us home. You know, till date, actually, what Abdul said shocks people when you talk to them. And they say, wow, you are not, you're not really using any other database. And you build this entirely yourself. The number of people who actually can build a database from scratch are fairly limited. The group is fairly small. And so it was really a humongous task. And as you've mentioned, you know, it really changed the direction of how we designed a database. What, we, what does a database really mean to us, right? The way Snowflake has built a database, it's really a number of organs that come together and form the body. And that's also a concept that's novel to the database industry. 
Guys, congratulations. You must be so proud. And uh, it's just going to be awesome watching uh, the next, next decade. So thank you so much for, for sharing your stories. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Thank you Dave.